comic fam. We got a fun one for you today. And big congratulations to Gary Hendroff. You won the giveaway from last week's video. Enjoy your trending comics list. Oh my goodness, we gotta get right into this list, comic fam. We have so many members of our amazing community, the best community in the world, the comic fam that's gonna join me at the table virtually because we gotta talk about the trending comics in the comic book market. Hit the subscribe button, we're here every single week, and let's chat about some Disney Investor Day spec that's happening all week with number 10 on the list. We have Vote Loki, issue number one. Seeing $18 average sales and a high sale for a raw grade copy you know high sale sixty dollars and i'm expecting more 9.8s to start coming out on the market after these comics get sent to florida and get fast tracked back because after the trailer dropped so much new footage seeing owen wilson taking on his role at the time variance authority we know loki is going to be continuing his path post avengers endgame after his escape utilizing that cesar act it looks like we're going to see him travel through time there's even a little glimpse of a dystopian future but what is at the end is loki wearing this signature crown found on this cover with a vote loki button on this connection to this comic book has caused it to spike and make its way to our list at number 10 with a 1,633% increase in copies sold in just seven days. Keep an eye out for the Stephanie Hans fried pie variant going for a lot less. And I think personally, Loki looking a lot doper on this cover. Now, let's take a look at number nine on this list of 10 because I actually could have put two different comics here and we're going to go with the one that has had a greater percentage of copies sold in the last seven days. Courtesy of this Disney investor meeting, we have at the list at number nine, Invincible Iron Man issue number one. Seeing $20 average sales and a CGC 9.8 going for $200. Now, I could have put Thor 372 on this list. You want to go over to Key Collector Comics, the best comic app that exists. Utilize the code TOM101 to unlock a free one-week subscription. You support the show, but you get access to the Trending 20, where these other books that I don't put on the list of 10 actually go that you need to be following because I told you about that Time Variance Authority causing spikes. Well, it caused some interesting numbers to this particular Thor comic, and I Really want you to see it. But we're talking about Riri. We're talking about Ironheart. Her first time on cover in the classic Ironheart costume. And after the Ironheart series was confirmed with Dominique Thorne taking on the mantle, we saw a 1,560% increase in copies sold. I'm so stoked. And I think a lot of members, although we're specking on Riri, gave up on specking on Riri. And I don't think they should have. We know that Iron Man has to pass the mantle on to someone. We've been talking nothing but next gen heroes. And this one is coming to Disney+. Plus. There's also a handful of other variants of this very issue. Click the variant button right on Key Collector and it'll list them all for you. And let's take a look at number eight because... Honestly, comic fam, it's so confusing, but Robert Kirkman is doing something awesome. I dig it, and I had to get Russ the Comics Sensei to break it down because he actually got the comics in hand. He read them, and this is what he had to say about it. I personally bought 10 issues of this copy. 10 copies of this issue? I'm losing my mind. Kick it to Russ. Hey comic fam, coming in at number eight this week, we have a brand new comic, Solid Blood number 17. Now this comes from Image Comics, but not necessarily the Image Comics that we know. This book is selling solidly for $18 this week, and it seems to have come from an alternate reality. If you look at the list of people on who are on Creators, Rob Liefeld's still working on there, Donnie Cates is working at Image Comics, they're based out of Berkeley, California, instead of being based out of Portland. Um, Kirkman even came out and made a big video about the fact that he didn't know why Ryan Otley, who has an exclusive with Marvel, could have possibly worked on this book. But if you read the letters from the editor and the letters to the editor, it definitely shows that we are in a different reality. Fidel Castro was assassinated in 1981, and we see Michonne from Walking Dead. Now, if you read more into these letters that the editor tries to tell people, it's Kirkman's first running series that's going to hit issue number 25. Walking Dead didn't last very long, and he keeps talking about a character called the Sword Master. Well, there's also an interesting thing that the Sword's Man was a character that was supposed to be in The Walking Dead before that got 
ended at 193. That was actually solicited in 194 and 195. Now, the big thing is, this is probably something to do with a crossover, especially because Donny Cates' name is tied to it. We're not quite certain what's happening with this book, but we're pretty sure that number 18 will be coming out regularly and a lot of people will be following it. What an interesting way to market this comic book. Comic fam, I want to know your thoughts about this book in the comment section below. It'll enter you to win this Phantom Star Killer Enzo Garza Comic Tom Mystery Mail Call exclusive. And we'll announce it on the video next week, but not before I talk about Riri Williams again. That's right, at the list at number seven, we have Invincible Iron Man issue number nine. This is the first appearance of Riri Williams suiting up in armor, but it's not the Iron Heart armor. This is the first time she takes on a prototype suit that she builds herself. Now, we are seeing big gains to this issue because it's a major moment for the character, and she had a cameo appearance in issue seven, which is also spiking, and I could have put that on the list, but I didn't because there's a 608% increase in copies sold of issue number nine. Seeing her actually utilize the suit and fight crime in the suit is pushing collectors to purchase this comic book, to invest in this key, and that's why we're seeing such crazy gains. We're also seeing the variant cover by Chris Turcotte, the Horseman of Apocalypse variant. See some gains as well. Keep an eye out for the second printing. It has a blue title text, and that's how you can tell the difference. Now, as for the cover A of issue number nine, we're seeing $90 average sales and a high sale for the first time ever of $400 for a CGC 9.8. Now let's take a look at the list at number six. We have Secret Invasion issue number one, seeing $10 average sales, a high sale of $200 for a CGC 9.8, and a percentage increase of copies sold of 1,817%. And it was a year ago, this very week, that Key Collector reported that Scrolls, the shape-shifting aliens, had plans to invade Earth and impersonate key members of the Marvel Universe Key Collector Comics informed every member in 2019 that this was coming and it was just validated this very week, courtesy of the Disney Investor Day meeting. This is huge, comic fam. Key Collector called it and let's give credit where credit's due. Holy smokes, Secret Invasion is coming and I am so stoked about it. That's why you gotta watch out for those notifications. Make sure they're turned on and watch for key alerts. It's this kind of spec that people move on quickly and this is how you can get the news right away and stay in the know. And another way that you can keep a pulse on the speculation news is following this next member of our community. You know that he is dropping major spec news on the weekly. Let's welcome Jim Comics to the trending video for the first time. Take it over, our good friend from Canada. Hello and welcome everyone. It is time for number five on this week's top 10 hot comics of the week. And we've got Iron Man 225 showing up on the list. And you may be asking yourself, Jim, why we've got Iron Man 225 on the list? And I'm about to tell you. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, this is part one of a six part story arc, which ran from 225 to 231 called Armor Wars. And Disney in this last week, as you know, released a ton of info about new shows and, and characters coming to Disney+. Plus. And one of the shows they said was coming was called Armor Wars, where Don Cheadle's going to reprise his role as War Machine. So that's pretty exciting. Looking forward to that. So that's caused this book to really heat up. Prices have climbed on this one. And sales week over week are about 2,000% increase, which is pretty significant for, uh, for an older book. This book came out in 1987, and I was buying comics back then. And uh, back then, they did not have a lot of store exclusives and everything like we do now. If you don't know, they did occasionally change the covers on some of their books. And I found this one in one of my old back issue bins. This is uh, Iron Man 225. This is the Nick is a Knob cover. Even back then, they knew Nick. They were <laughs> they knew that Nick was a knob. And if you don't know who Nick is, he's the uh, the owner of Key Collector Comics. I like to trash on him every chance I get. It's my civic duty to let the world know that Nick is a knob. So uh, there you go. <laughs> Anyways, folks, take care. Happy hunting. And uh, back to you, Tom. Thanks for joining us at the table, Jim. Link in the description. For all of our guests on this show today, we got a powerhouse. We had to get the A-listers. We have more on deck. And let's chat about number four on the list. We have WYRD issue number one, going for $12 average sales and a $30 sale for a high-grade copy. Didn't even see a CGC 9.8 sale because people weren't specking on this book that came out, debuted in 2019. 
It's a four-part series, and it follows a detective who is seemingly invincible. I took a look at issue number one, and heck, it's actually pretty fun. I got to get my hands on issues two through four. Happen to have a copy to take a look at, and it's exactly as what the synopsis is. There's some supernatural cases that he has to take on. You know, hey, look it. There's a Cold War era bio weapon that's you know causing the body counts to stack up. We want to send you out there, you know, and take care of it. Kind of detective, and he's just worried about his pay. He's a pay for hire, a hero for hire. He's invincible. I don't know, but it's coming to FX, and we even have deadline reporting on Matthew Rise taking on the role. So we're seeing a percentage of increase in copies sold of 2,050%. Keep an eye out for this comic book. And personally, I enjoy the Jeff Lemire cover a lot better. Keep an eye out for that cover B, which is actually selling for a little bit higher than the cover A. And now let's take a look at number three on the list with more confirmed speculation. We have Ms. Marvel issue number 13 from 2015. We know Kamala's coming to Disney Plus and it can't be soon enough. Such great character designs, villains, so much potential for amazing character development in this series. And really, I think there's a lot of spec potential in so many issues from this run. This book is seeing $20 average sales with a high sale at a CGC 9.8 of just shy of $50 going for 42 bucks. I don't think the high graded copies have really caught up with this confirmed spec because Camran, the inhuman, the antagonist will be seen in this show. We have Rish Shah who is confirming himself as taking on the role of this character. Here's a picture of him on Instagram without shoes on. And we have a 2,200% increase in copies sold after he announced that he is going to be taking on this character. Here's a fun quote that I think summarizes this character really and what we're going to expect from him in this series in reference to people with abilities. We are better than all these people. There's no reason for you to keep wasting your energy to protect people who don't believe what you believe, who can't do what you do. So this definitely is going to be a character that's going to cause some trouble in the show. Will the spec grow much more than this? Villain spec is kind of back and forth. And unless he's a fan favorite, it's probably not going to see much higher gains than we're going to see over this next week. So buy with caution. And let's welcome... A good friend of mine, a valued member of the comic fam, we have the bodybuilder. His physique is amazing. You know him. It's Reggie Collects. Number two on the list is Star Wars X-Wing Rogue Squadron issue number one from Dark Horse. And this book had an average sales price of only $45, but that was recently eclipsed by a raw near mint copy that sold for $249 on December 17th. Now what's crazy is that that raw copy actually eclipsed a recent CGC 9.8 sale at $135. How many copies of this book have been sold week over week? We are talking about 2,200% growth week over week. And we know that there is a lot of excitement right now for Star Wars related properties because of the Mandalorian, but also because of all of the news that has been coming out from Disney. Adding fuel to that fire is Patty Jenkins, the director of Wonder Woman, who has also been tasked with being the director for Rogue Squadron coming out from Disney. And if you haven't seen the trailer featuring her, you need to treat yourself because in this trailer, what we learn is that Patty is trying to create the best fighter movie of all time. And she's doing this to honor her father, a fighter pilot who lost his life in service to this country. Reggie Collects is over on YouTube, link in the description. This is such a great member of our community, dishing out such great conversations about collectibles, comics, grading comics, speculation, interviews, and the list goes on. Go give him some love, and we need to just take a quick little moment right here, right now. 
comic fam, we had a very big thing that happened this week. There's not a whole lot of us. I mean, there's a, there we're a big community here, but we are a, a, a small community. Our, our, we collect expensive paper, right? You know, we, we, we share this passion together and we have a member of our community. You know, it's a kind of a, the, the, the thing that happened that inspired me to want to bring all of us together. And we may do this again. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to keep bringing members of our community on our show. But one of our members, uh, one of our members of our very show here, Jem from Gem and Collectibles, achieved something amazing this week. He hit 100,000 subscribers. Comic fam, let them know in the comments section. Congratulations. And I felt it only right that he report on the number one trending book of the week. Thank you, brother. Congratulations. Appreciate you, comic fam. What's going on, Tom? Thanks for having me. I'm honored to be announcing the number one trending comic book in the world. You guys knew this was coming ever since we got the announcement that Christian Bale was going to be portraying this character on screen in Thor Love and Thunder. I'm talking about Thor God of Thunder issue two, the first appearance of Gore the God Butcher. Not only is Gore an awesome villain, and it's going to be so cool to see him portrayed on screen, it also has ties to Null with the first appearance of the Necro Sword. Null being the big bad in Marvel Comics right now with the current event King in Black. We've been seeing a ton of gains in this book. We have a $210 high average, CGC 9.8 is going for $500. Since the announcement, there's been an 846% increase in the amount of sales on this comic. There are three variants that you need to know about. You got to be up on the newsstand variant, which has an average of $550. A CGC 8.0 went for $500, which is the same as the regular cover A in a 9.8. So imagine if we saw a newsstand in a 9.8 hit the market. There are approximately 40 newsstand copies of Thor number two, and there's only two on the CGC census. A big reason for the lack of newsstand editions is because those were returnable and unsold copies were destroyed. Our current data places the newsstand print approximately 1-3% to of the direct market orders. There is also a 1 out of 50 ratio variant by artist Daniel Asuna, and there's a second printing variant that has the blue barcode for that whole Marvel Now footer that they used to do. And that book sells for about $300. Back to the Necro Sword. The true origin was revealed in the Donny Cates Ryan Stegman Venom issue number four. It was created by Null, the symbiote god, and forged with the blood of a celestial space god. The symbiotic All Black earned its name as the Necro Sword and the God Slayer after Null's massacre, leaving countless dead gods in his wake. The Necro Sword was then passed down to Gore, who then became the God Butcher. With them bringing such recent characters to the MCU, it does open those possibilities of seeing Null on screen sometime within the next decade. Awesome book to own, super cool character, I can't wait to see Christian Bale portray this guy on screen. Hey, as always, we want to thank you guys for watching, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, make sure to hit that like, and as always, stay minty fresh and geek responsibly. Nuff set. Yo, comic fam, link in the description to join the January mystery mail call. Every single member is getting an Eternals number one Cersei variant by Lucio Badillo. Oh my gosh, we got Lucio Badillo. Link in the description, join the community, support the show, and have a great weekend.